G'day and welcome to Redriven. Now, look, our apologies to our North American viewers. Even though you received such wonderful French things as Blue Duvernier cheese, the 1947 Cheval Blanc wine from Bordeaux, and kissing, you never received these little French delicacies, the Renault Clio, or as the French pronounce it, Le Renault Clio. But maybe you guys dodged a bullet because even though Renault makes some of the best hot hatches when they're new, French car manufacturers have a uh, interesting reputation when it comes to reliability and longevity. So what actually goes wrong with these? What do they cost to own and operate? What do they like to live with on a daily basis? Most importantly, but should you buy one? Let's find out. Now guys, before we get deep into the Clio, I should mention that in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the Australian variants of the fourth generation Clio, and more specifically, the RS models. But if you're not from Australia, or if you're after information on the non-RS Clios, stay tuned, because everything we're gonna be going over should relate to those Clios in your local market. Also, to keep this video as objective as we possibly could, we've reached out to multiple Renault owners groups, Clio owners groups, Renault specialist mechanics, technicians, and we've trawled through what feels like hours and hours of online surveys, customer satisfaction reports, reliability reports, and forums. So this video is basically the culmination of all of that information. Now the Generation 4 Clio marked a pretty big departure for Clios from previous generations. Renault decided to drop the option of a three-door hatchback, and this model also received a midlife update called the Phase 2 in 2016. And also the RS models and the standard Clios, like French wine, are available in a confusingly vast array of different variants. But to give you a better overview of all of this, here's me doing a voiceover. Okay, let's start with the non-RS variants. The Clio was initially available in base spec authentique, mid spec expression, and top spec dynamic variants. Then to bridge the gap to the RS models, the Clio GT arrived in mid 2014. However, after the 2016 update, the variants were reconfigured and renamed to the Life, Life EDC, Zen EDC, Intense, and GT line, all receiving extra bells and whistles the higher up the grapevine that you travel. Speaking of the 2016 update, the Clio received something of an overhaul for its midlife refresh. New styling cues both inside and out, but more importantly, the transmission was improved and refined, the suspension recalibrated, and the levels of tech and equipment were updated and increased. Now in terms of RS models, which many RS tragics are still very upset about because there was no option for a manual transmission, strap yourselves in because the RS model range can be a bit confusing. The RS200 range kicked off in 2013 with the Sport, then it moved to the Cup, then to the Sport Trophy, and then the Cup Trophy. Basically, the Sport platform is the normal option and has a, a more plush ride, if, if you can call it that, whereas the Cup chassis gets a lower ride height and stiffer suspension. Then the sport trim level was boosted with the addition of the trophy badge. That lasted until 2014 when the trophy models were replaced by the sport premium and cup premium. Then you have the limited edition models like the RS18 and the Monaco GP variants. And finally, this car, the more powerful RS220 trophy. Now look, obviously we'd love to go over every variant and what every update included, but we'd just be here for hours and that would be boring. But the thing is, we have gathered all of that information and we've put it in our incredibly handy and completely free Redriven Cheat Sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before handing over your hard earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over and so much more. Check it out at redriven.com or in the link below. Now guys, look, if you're already a Clio or an RS expert or you already own a Clio and you've noticed in this video that we've missed some you know, major things, please let us know in those comments. It helps for everybody to see what's going on. Look, obviously we're gonna do our best to cover as much as we can on the car, but yeah, if we miss something, let us know in the comments. Okay, so how's the exterior? Look, personally, I love the way that these look. I love that it's you know small enough to be sporty and it's a little bit aggressive, yet it's still kind of classy and it's, it's not like a hot hatch that my mum would be embarrassed getting inside. As far as some design features, I love that the door handle at the back here is integrated into the window. It basically kind of looks a bit like a three door, even though it has the practicality of a five door hatch. I love that the trophy, being a trophy model, it sits a little bit lower. The wheels are great. The post update ones of these are even sexier than this, which is hard to believe because I, Bloody love the way this looks. But enough about me, what do you guys think? Do you guys like the look of the Clio RS? Let us know in the comments. Now in terms of what to watch out for if you're in the market for one of these things, first things first, accident damage. 
Okay, in terms of non-RS models, these things are getting more and more affordable. We'll, we'll get to what they actually cost in the market in a little bit. But because they're getting more affordable, some owners are on a pretty tight budget, and therefore if they have an accident, sometimes they don't get them repaired properly. They you know, cut some corners with some dodgy repair work, or they'll just sell the car as quickly as they can after it's been repaired because they just want to get it off their hands as quickly as possible. And secondly, in terms of the RS models, look, these things are performance cars, and unfortunately, some drivers do drive them beyond the cars and their own limits, which ends up with them driving into trees and houses and gutters and front yards. So again, check for accident damage. So how do you find accident damage? It's pretty easy. First up, look at all the panel gaps, especially around any of the plastic stuff. The panel gaps across the whole car should match. Look at the paint, especially with metallic paint. Check if the color and the consistency, like the texture, all matches. The big telltale sign, look for spray paint overspray. Pop the bonnet, look for overspray under the bonnet. Look for any overspray in any of the vents and up under the wheel arches. If you see paint overspray, do not buy that car. Okay, next up, look for gutter rash on the wheels. Look, most Clios do spend their lives in built up metropolitan areas, so a bit of light gutter rash is to be expected. But if you see any big gouges out of the wheels or even out of the tires, it can be a sign that the car has hit a gutter pretty hard. And that can lead to suspension issues and mechanical dramas. So yeah, any big impacts, yeah, walk away. Now in terms of common issues and problems with the Clio across the range, we'll get to that in a moment. So how's the interior? Well, you know what, from a design standpoint, it's great, it's pretty funky in here. Like there's a, I don't know, there's kind of like a, an atmosphere of fun, which is what this car is all about. It's obviously built on, you know, the, the basics of a, of a budget hatch, like a lot of the plastics are kind of hard and scratchy, but you gotta forgive it for that because it's a budget hatch, it's just like a hot version. There are some funky little highlights which are maybe good, maybe bad, depends on opinion. I personally like them because again, it's just fun, like this, not very convincing carbon fiber trim that's kind of cup bombed through the area. I really like the sort of like red, at red anodized bits and pieces here. Even the seats, you know, the red trophy up here and the red stitching. I really like this interior. Now, speaking of seats, these things are phenomenally comfortable. These are superb. I have to mention, but these are almost like a optional or you know a Recaro style seat. These seats aren't in all of the Clios, uh, only in the really top spec RSs. Try to find one with these seats because they're superb. As far as wear and tear goes, it's pretty good. Uh, well done Renault for putting your piano black plastic up here and not in kind of a scratch area down here. The leather on the seats is aging really nicely. It's not too bad. Even the bolsters on these seats, they're still really, really firm. Because the plastics are all pretty hard, they don't get too damaged easily. Even the leather on the steering wheel, it hasn't gone too glossy yet either. So wear and tear wise, nice. Although there are reports that these interiors can get very rattly. So we'll uh, find out if that's the case when we go driving it. Also the footrest, and this might be because today it's like bloody hot outside, but the footrest glue has melted. So the footrest has now become a cheese grater. Yum, but gross. Not a deal. Okay, in the back seat, I'm exactly 322.2 meters shorter than the Eiffel Tower. This is in my driving position and it's a bit shit. I'm absolutely cramped back here. Even like, I know you can put the head, headrest up here, but that doesn't really help because I can't feel my legs anymore. Plus, because of the seat, I've got to do a full OnlyFans style leg spread, which isn't very ladylike of me. Yeah, not great for ergonomics in the back. But wear and tear wise, pretty good. Probably because no one really sits back here. The leather's in really good condition. All the door cards feel great. Yeah, no one really sits back here because it's torture. So how's the tech? Well look, like every car, the tech is going to vary depending on the year and the trim spec and updates and all that sort of stuff. So to give you a, a better overview, here's me doing a voiceover. The absolute minimum that you can expect, say in a 2013 base model, will include a two-speaker stereo, air conditioning, Bluetooth connectivity, central locking, power windows, DAB radio and a trip computer. However, Later high spec variants can include parking sensors with a reversing camera, keyless entry and push button start, climate control air conditioning, rain sensing wipers, and a seven inch color touchscreen with integrated sat nav, Bluetooth streaming, and a four speaker audio system. Plus, an entertainment pack has been available which introduces a Bose audio system, a telemetry display, or as Renault call it, an RS monitor, and it exchanges the default media system for an R Link multimedia setup. Apple CarPlay has never been available as standard, while Android Auto was available later in the life cycle as an optional extra. Plus, some models will give you the ability to change the engine sounds from, say, a Nissan GTR to even a V8. 
Obviously, this is via the speakers and not the physical engine itself, but you know, it's a bit of fun anyway. Now look, for what Clio's get which levels of tech, just jump on redriven.com and check out that cheat sheet or click on the link in the description below. Okay, so is it practical? Well, in the boot, yes. This actually has one of the biggest boots in its class, which is excellent. Plus, you can fold the seats down, but they don't fold flat, which is kind of annoying. But boot-wise, good practicality. However, practicality in the back seat, not great. There's a spot here for your collection of business cards. There is, there are door pockets, but to get to them, you've you've got to kind of break your, your wrist and your elbow to get to it. And you can, if you've been doing lots of yoga, you can access the tiny little drink holder back here, but that's it for practicality. Not great. And practicality up front. So you've got, you've got three drink holders, but the thing is, they're quite small. It's basically like Renault is forcing you to drink small pretentious coffees, which I'm all in favor of because large coffees are gross. Small coffees are better. So it forces you to have like a macchiato or a piccolo or something like that. You've got a spot just here for a croissant. Fits a croissant perfectly. You've got another croissant holder up here. You've got croissant holders in the doors like that, which is good. Um, there is another little spot here. I don't know what this is for. It sort of doesn't really kind of not doesn't really hold a phone properly at all, which is kind of annoying. And also, an incredibly deep glove box. I think that's it for practicality. Nothing under the seats, nothing up here. No, that's about it. Okay, so what commonly goes wrong with these things? Well, look, we're going to get to the mechanical stuff in a second, but first up, let's start with the exterior. Okay, Clio's fitted with the sunroof. There are loads of reports out there that the sunroofs can leak water, and that water can lead to you know, internal problems, electrical dramas, and just an absolute nightmare, and it can cost thousands of dollars to fix. And even sunroofs that aren't leaking, there are heaps of reports that those sunroofs can get very, very rattly. There are quite a few reports of some horrible mechanical sounds coming from the wheels, and that's generally down to some faulty wheel bearings. Now, there was a factory recall for 2014 and 2015 Clio's regarding dodgy windscreen wiper motors. They just stopped working. The problem is, through our research, we found that these dodgy wiper motors can affect all Gen 4 Clio's. So if you are test driving, make sure that you test the windscreen wipers, both the front and the back, and make sure they actually work. There are a few reports that the brake lights just stay on because the circuitry apparently melts. There was also a recall regarding the rear spoiler not being fitted properly. Apparently the car likes to get all French and just undress itself in public. Okay, inside there are plenty of reports that the infotainment systems can just glitch out or they're not responsive or they're super, super slow to operate, especially in the R-Link equipped models. Unfortunately, like many French cars, there are plenty of reports that the interior electronics can just freak out. Many owners have reported that the actual air conditioning flaps are made from very fragile plastic. The problem is, as these get older, the plastic gets more brittle and they can snap and break off. And also, as we mentioned before, many owners are reporting that these things can get really, really rattly and squeaky and the whole car sounds a bit like a maraca when you're driving. But again, we'll find out when we go and drive it in a second. Now also, this isn't so much of what goes wrong, but just more of a complaint. The reversing camera, it looks like you're looking out the periscope of a World War II U-boat. It almost looks vintage in the way the camera works. It's not great. Now, before we get into mechanically what goes wrong with these things, I've got to ask a favor, guys. Can you please hit those like, subscribe, and bell buttons and share Redriven as much as you can? The more you hit those buttons and the more you share Redriven, the more of these videos we can make for you. And that's all we want to do for a living. So yeah, get clicking, get sharing. Okay, now mechanically, what goes wrong with the Renault Clio? Thing is, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not qualified to tell you, but Jim is. These are one of those cars where we don't see a major problem over and over again. It's more of a case if we see a lot of little things quite randomly. There are some reports of timing chain problems, but that could also be connected to poor servicing and the wrong oil rather than a manufacturing problem. We do see the odd coil pack problem and the occasional coolant leak. We see a few noisy wheel bearings and wheel speed sensors. And unfortunately, because it's a French car, we do see a few electrical gremlins. But look, overall, they're not too bad. If you're getting a non-RS version or a lower spec, I definitely recommend getting a manual gearbox because the auto transmissions are problematic and expensive to fix. Check for factory recalls because a few of them out there do have a problem with their hydraulic brake lines, which is definitely a safety issue. Look, at the moment, they're fairly new and they're okay, but historically, Renaults typically don't age that well. If you are looking at one, make sure it's got a well-documented service history. And just on that, some of them have 10,000 K service intervals and some have 15. I would recommend if you want it to last, whatever you get, make sure you service it every 10,000 Ks. 
So is it safe? Well, the Clear received a full five-star ANCAP safety rating from its launch in 2013, and it's retained that five stars all the way through its life cycle. But to give you more of an overview of what safety features to expect in the Clio, here's me doing another voiceover, but this time in French. Les équipements de sécurité de base, herb multiples airbags, freinage anti-blocage, répartiteur électronique de freinage, correcteur électronique de trajectoire, système d'assistance au freinage, alerte de ceinture de sécurité, limiteur d'effort et prétentionneur de ceinture de sécurité, appui tête et aide au démarrage en côte. For all the details of which Clio gets what safety tech, just jump on redriven.com and check out that cheat sheet. So what's it like to drive? Well look, let's get the elephant in the room out of the road first. Is the twin clutch dual clutch gearbox a piece of shit? I wish it was a manual and look, a manual arguably would make the car more fun, but realistically most of these Clio's spend most of their time in these kind of built up metropolitan and suburban areas. So the twin clutch does make more sense and it gives the car a broader appeal. So that's always good. But these transmissions, they do work really hard. There's loads of moving parts and they have a pretty horrible reputation when it comes to reliability. Like a bit of clunkiness in stop start traffic is unfortunately to be expected, but if there's any like shuddering feelings or some dull thudding sounds or like the shift pattern is all over the place, walk away from that car. Next up when you're on the test drive, make sure you floor it and feel that the engine pulls smoothly and cleanly. If there's any, you know, delay or you know the, the power delivery is all over the place, or if there's any plumes of smoke out the back, again, walk away from that car. But this one. is excellent. <laughs> I, I forgot how much fun these things are and they sound great. This isn't even in like the RS mode, just in standard mode and it still sounds fantastic. Now, speaking of noises and sounds, okay, as to be expected, you know, this is built on a budget little hot hatch and it's got some bloody firm suspension, which we'll get to in a second. So there are a few rattles and squeaks and creaks. I've driven a few of these with a few kilometers on them, especially if they've spent their lives on rough roads, they can get really rattly. This one's not too bad. Mm. Now, there was, a, there was an update to the suspension post the update in 2016 in the phase two cars. This is a pre-update phase one car, and the suspension is pretty bloody firm. Like, it's not too crashy. It handles incredibly well, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit crashy. It's become a bit crashy over time. One thing that is a bit annoying about the rear visibility is a bit crap. Both like the blind spots and the rear window is quite small. That's a bit frustrating. It's funny, you know, like in the performance car world, so many people are just obsessed with power figures and acceleration times, but this is where it's at. The problem with like really powerful cars, at least in Australia, you can only use about maybe five to 10% of what those cars can do. With something like this in built up metropolitan areas, you can actually have fun with it all of the time, especially in RS mode. Hit that little button, flick it into manual mode. <sighs> Sounds good, so much fun. Guys, small hot hatches are the business until they've been abused or mistreated and then they just become nightmares. Pricing here in Australia kicks off from as little as $7,500, but a $7,500 Clio is going to be riddled with issues and honestly, just a complete piece of shit. At the other end of the spectrum, you're going to be looking at the $30,000 range for a late model mint condition RS model, or like a limited edition. Something like this, a 2015 RS220 trophy in excellent condition, going to be looking in the low $20,000 realm. But we should mention, and unfortunately I do know this from experience, Hot hatches from France and basically French cars in general do suffer from some pretty horrendous depreciation here in Australia. Yes, the used market at the moment is honestly overinflated, but when that goes back to normal, if it goes back to normal, a lot of hot French hatches, including Clio's, are gonna depreciate like crazy. So even the limited edition models, you might think being limited edition is gonna retain its value, they generally don't. And for pricing elsewhere on this globe, here's a graphic. Renault claim a fuel consumption figure of anywhere from four to six litres per 100 kilometres, obviously depending on the engine and the model, all that sort of stuff. This particular Clio is claimed at 5.9 litres per 100 k's, but its average is nine litres per 100 k's. Renault offered a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty on all Clios. However, 
Renault then decided to dabble in some discrimination and as of mid-2018 reduced the five years to three years for all RS models. How dare they? Hoons are people too. Servicing is recommended at every 10, 15 or 20,000 Ks or every 12 months depending on the year and the trim and all that sort of stuff. But honestly, we recommend it every 10,000 Ks and at least every 12 months and more if you're driving it on track or if you're driving the RS models in the way that they were designed. Also, if you are in the market for one of these or if you're buying one, make sure you join an owner's group. We joined owner's groups and reached out to them to do the research on this video and they were so incredibly helpful. If you're buying one, make sure you join an owner's group. Owner's groups, you guys are legends, thank you. Okay, so should you buy one? Well, it depends on which one and who you're buying it from. When talking the non-RS Clios, look, it's not that we recommend against buying one, it's just that for what they're asking on the used car market, there are other alternatives out there that come with a far better and proven reliability record that offer an equivalent driving experience. And look, sure, might not offer the same levels of Euro cool, but if a budget hatches what you need, Maybe it's best to look past the image and just focus on the realities that the generally lower maintenance and running costs and the superior resale value of, say, Japanese or South Korean hatchbacks will do more for you in the long run than this sexy little French option. But what about in terms of the RS models? Should you buy one of these? Well, that all comes down to who owned it before you. Look, there's no denying that the Clio RS models, look, honestly, all of them, even when used, are just fantastic to drive. And the crazy cats at Renault Sport, time and time again, pretty much set the standard for hot hatches. But because of how great these are to drive and because the Generation 4 Clio attracted a much broader demographic, it kind of goes to show that some people just shouldn't have nice things. A faultless and thorough service history is absolutely vital. Look, these engines work their lubricating oils pretty hard, and whatever you do, make sure that you have an experienced mechanic go over the entire car for a pre-purchase inspection before you hand over your cash. Plus, various Clio RS models are commonly seen hammering around race circuits at track days. And even though these cars may have been maintained really well, a car that's been used on track with such enthusiasm is probably best avoided for most used buyers. Unless you're buying one to be a track hack, if you see any signs of you know, race circuit or track time, like maybe on the owner's social media account, avoid it. The Clio is an incredibly enjoyable car, and the one to get is one of these, an RS220 Trophy. But unfortunately, Clios can become fragile in the wrong hands, and look, it's up to you if you want to take that risk. For us, because finding a good one relies on so many variables, sorry, but we'd go with something a bit more boring and sensible. Until Redriven gets more popular and we can afford to throw money at one of these. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and what did you think of the Clio? Let us know in those comments below. And remember, please hit those like, subscribe, and bell buttons, and share Redriven as much as you can. Again, the more you share this and support us, the more of these videos we can make, and we would love to keep doing that. See you guys next time. And because the Generation 4 Clio attracted, that's the word, there you go. So what do they cost to own and operate? Oh, so close. <laughs> I've done that one a million times. There you go. Okay, so mechanically, what? No, that was completely wrong. Here we go. Now there was a factory recall. Re Come on, here we go. However, we'd recommend at least. Uh, my voice is gone. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, her. So yeah, if you're buying one, join an owner. Uh, oh. Yes, the used car market at the moment is you know is is big and. F what am I trying to say? As is, is infl inflated. Here we go.